Guys, look how miniature this cow is. This is actually blowing my mind, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if I can get a good <clears throat> reference. I'm gonna try something real quick, though. Put the camera on 0.5. I'm gonna hold it like this. The cow's walking away from me, so that doesn't really help my cause. But come on, little cow, it's okay. Come on. I want y'all to see this cow is like to my belly button level my belly button height most cows are a lot taller than this this is like a miniature one it's kind of blowing my mind to be honest with you i don't know if it's because i'm on an elevated ground i'm pretty sure i'm not I'm not even sure if i got a good angle of it but this cow is really really short it's the same like i guess length like from here to here but its actual height is tiny do y'all see it too, or is it just me? I think the fact, the fact that this fence is not very tall and the fence is right here, look. It'd be easier if the cow would just get close to me. So I, my hands are like this, shoulder width, shoulder height rather, and the hand is a pretty good height above the cow. So sorry if that wasn't the best reference angle, but Something funny I noticed. Guys, y'all see what's happening here? I get on the tractor to go get packages and this is not gonna work. You think she'll jump off if I start the motor up? Yeah. Nikki, I don't, want, I don't like jump scaring them though because I personally hate jump scares myself. I don't wanna be a cruel person, but I also kinda need to get packages and Nikki, no way, you're not gonna lay there and take a nap. Please go down. She's in the bucket right now, guys. Wouldn't that be funny if I took her in the bucket with me to get the packages? <laughs> Nikki. Oh, man. I don't want to jump scare her. I don't like being a bad person. But I really do got to go get them before it gets dark. The sun. Is that avalanche up there? <laughs> That's funny. But the sun sets pretty soon. There, okay. She's going away. All right. All right. I feel a bit better about it now. But what I was saying though is that the sun sets a lot sooner now that we're in winter time than it does during the summer. It is five o'clock in about 20 minutes. It's gonna start getting dark. So it makes it a lot harder to basically fit in everything you want to do in, in the daylight hours. During the summer, it gets dark sometimes at like eight or nine. I remember there were some days it would be like 8.20 and it would still be pretty light outside. It would be barely getting dark. That's just, I think probably to some of you who don't live in Texas or don't live super close to the equator probably unheard of but that's how it's like sometimes here the math doesn't really make sense to me though because you think about a three hour difference between the most daylight hours you get and then the fewest time changes only one hour so it should only be a one hour difference i know that the proximity of where we are to the sun changes based on the season so I suppose that's where the other two hours or so comes from, but just in general, the math doesn't entirely make sense to me. Look at, look at Tia running alongside. She would get on if she could, but it's way too high of a step for her. She can't jump 10 feet in the air. She's not Michael Jordan, so she'll have to walk alongside me. All right, guys, here I am at my cousin's house, and a lot of you have asked me before what my hair would look like if it was straightened, and it's not being straightened per se, but it's being combed, so I have a bad feeling about what's going to happen here. Having fun there, Alora. Oh my goodness. Do I look like a different human? No. No? I look like the same human? Yes. It's not that bad. She hasn't made the curls go away. That's really what I was afraid of, was like... Looking like I mean, little... I mean, your curls in the back are gone. Yeah, your curls in the back are, like, gone. Are they? 
Uh, am I even recording? Yes. yes. You know, recording the. How do I look, guys? Do I look different yet? Oh, man, this is horrible. Oh, Laura, what did you do to me? <laughs> well, guys, I think it's official. My curly hair is gone. It's now, bad. I am the straight haired farmer, it looks like. <laughs> Straight hair. What is a straight hair? Ow, ow, okay, you don't gotta poke me in the eye, Laura. Mm, there you go. I don't know, now I just look like I have clown hair, just like poof. <laughs> now I look like a poofy clown hair. I think right here is actually a really good place to start. For those of y'all who don't know, those are guineas right there. Pawpaw has about 20 of them. Of course, they can fly over and back to this side of the fence so they roam pretty freely and a few interesting facts about guineas is that they originate from africa papa told me that you can see them in the movie see one just flew on top of the fence right there effortlessly it's, it's, they're like better than ducks like pablo when he tries to fly over the fence he has to get like a full head of steam going to just, to just barely clear my dad's fence but that right there was probably 10 percent of that guinea's effort and he is roosting or sitting on top of that fence no problem so they're better flyers than pablo fun fact number one <laughs> uh pawpaw told me that they originate from africa and that if you watch lion king you'll see guineas in that movie and i haven't watched it in several years so i don't remember that but that's pretty interesting and then thirdly which those of you who know anything about guineas know that what they are notorious for is being loud and when I say loud, I mean loud, loud, loud. Y'all think that Nate the Rooster's loud in the background? Cornholio's gobble? The geese? Do you think the geese are loud? None of those animals hold a candle up to these guys. When they want to get loud, you won't be able to hear yourself think. Someone sitting right next to you will not be able to hear you talk. You'll hardly be able to hear yourself talk. Uh, fortunately, they're not being loud right now uh but man i'm gonna go get a, i'm gonna go showcase some other animals and if i'm back around here when they're being loud i'll get a video for y'all and you'll see just how loud these guineas get they're pretty interesting animals they're pretty funny looking too if you look at them they have a little bit of a bizarre pigeon slash rooster look to them kind of funny <laughs> uh but yeah let's go on to our next different animal Guys, I want y'all to see this massive ant pile right here. I'm not sure how good my phone is picking it up, but looks like we have about 100 million ants in this one location alone. Pretty crazy if you ask me. It reminds me of this YouTube video I saw last week, and it was about, it was really silly. It was about the most powerful ant colonies in the world. And there's this one species of ant called the Argentine ant. And they say that it has like different colonies or chains all over the entire globe. In the southeastern U.S., they've started to become overtaken by the fire ant. But they have like locations in six of the seven continents. And so it's crazy that the same way that different armies throughout history have become powerhouses, global superpowers, developed a super broad and wide network. Likewise with ant colonies. It was really, really funny for me to think about. And the cool thing about the Argentine ant, I don't even know why I'm recording these ants because these aren't the Argentine ants. Wait, maybe they are actually, I don't know. Huh? The fire ants. Are you sure? Yes, they're then, red. I thought fire ants are bigger than that. No, they're just red. That's how you tell them apart. So maybe we're, maybe we're part of the southeastern U.S. region. I know we're kind of near the middle, but, Holy. huh? We're literally in Texas on the Gulf. We are southeast U.S., yes. Okay, yeah, so, so that's what I was saying is that I guess we are Southeast U.S. region because Southeastern U.S. is the one spot where fire ants have slowly begun to overtake the Argentine ant. At least 90% of the ant hills out here are fire ants. You can find maybe one or two bullet ant hills, but it's mostly fire ants. I don't ants. think that's true. Elijah. Elijah, the bullet ant is known to be like the most painful sting maybe it's not in bullet. the world. Maybe it's, not, I mean, it's, it's one of the little black ants, you know what I mean? Coyote Peterson had to take a bullet ant and bite, so that shows that just nowhere near the magnitude of ants, what average people come across. Bullet ants, they live in South America, though, so not too far away. Yeah. But uh, there are, like, it's, like, mostly fire ants right there, and then it's, like, every once in a while you find, like, a black, black ant hill. A black ant. All right. In any case, this right here is a, a rare case of a fire ant hill. We live in one of the few spots 
in the world where the fire ants have begun overtaking the Argentine ants. And as small as these things are, according to the video I watched, they're actually a lot bigger, maybe like four or five times larger than the Argentine ant. But the reason that the Argentine ant has been able to overtake them is be for most places is because just sheerly how many there are anytime a fire ant just tramples the argentine ant there's always more and it's never ending eventually so many argentine ants can climb on the back of one bullet ant i mean one fire ant sorry that they'll, they'll just rip the limbs into pieces talk about strength in numbers <laughs> but yeah that, silly i know just a little something i saw in a video i wanted to share with y'all seeing this ant hill reminded me of it okay okay any words elijah uh ants have six legs most a lot of different ant species have multiple types of ants including what they call the worker ants which is like the most stereotypical one then they have majors and certain ant colonies have what they call super majors where they're just huge ants so it'd be like you have like a normal worker, like a, a major, which is like a, this isn't like exact, but it's like a worker ant, which is like tiny, and you have like a major, and then you have like a super major where they're huge. You know what's pretty cool, Elijah? Have you ever seen Ant-Man before? Yes, I've seen Ant-Man. I thought Ant-Man was pretty funny. I saw a clip of it on YouTube get recommended, probably because of that ant video I watched. And so Ant-Man got recommended, and then I watched it, and I thought it was like, you know what, this guy's pretty funny. He shrinks like on a dime he switches back and forth between a normal sized person and an ant sized person well in one of the movies he shrinks down to um like string theory level which is funny because they describe his powers as shrinking the distance between his atoms but then he shrinks smaller than an atom what's smaller than there's something smaller than an atom there's what's it called i forget there's quarks quarks and then Theoretically, but well not theoretically, they also have then um, uh, quantum, which is like muons, buons, like quantum stuff. Uh -huh. And then below that, they have the theoretical string theory particles, which mm -hmm. is the theory that everything in the universe is made up of incredibly tiny strings. <laughs> string theory. Interesting stuff.